Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shubham Rastogi from Horiba Medical, France. Uh, we welcome you for this EQC awareness event online. Uh, in this event, uh, we are with Dr. Olivier uh, from CAP. And Dr. Olivier is a PhD MBA, uh, is a neuroscientist trained at universities of Heidelberg, Germany, and Cambridge, UK. After working in academic and pharmaceutical R&D, he joined the in vitro diagnostic industry in marketing, business development, and general management function for over 20 years ago. Dr. Olivier has been working with College of American Pathologists since January 2021 and is responsible for all European customer and its strategies. Uh, I'm Shubham Rastogi from Horiba Medical. So before we start the presentation from Horiba, uh, from, uh, from Dr. Oliver, uh, I'm going to present a little bit about Horiba Medical uh, Group. So I will be sharing my screen. Then there is a presentation of Dr. Oliver. And after that, we will be able to discuss your queries. You can ask the questions. I hope you are able to see my slides. So Horiba Medical is a Japanese group, which is formed in 1945 in Japan and are Expertise, are, expertise is in analysis and measurement of the technologies. As you can see here, the global network of Horiba is there across uh, America, Europe, Asia, and Japan. We are 1.8 billion US dollar group. We are into automotive, seg automotive business, we are into process and environment, medical, semiconductor, and scientific. So these are the five main domain where Horiba plays an important role. So aut in automotive, we have the em emission me measurement system. In process and environment, we, are, we have the stack gas analyzer. And in medical, we will be discussing in detail. Uh, and also in the semi semiconductor, we manufacture the mass flow controller. And for scientific, it's Raman imaging devices. Horiba Medical is 35 year uh, experience group in various in vitro diagnostic line. Our global headquarter is based in Montpellier, France. We have the production center across the globe, like France, Japan, India, Brazil, and China. Uh, we have the production center for the instrument in Japan and France, while the R&D center is in France and Japan. As we can see here, the Horiba Medical Global Footprint, uh, and uh, we are present directly in, we are presently directly or with the distributor in 150 countries. Yumizen is a new brand launched by Horiba Medical. Yumi is a Yumizen is a Japanese word. Yumi is uh, bow, archery bow, and Zen is peace. So the meaning of this brand name is that uh, the diagnosis or accuracy with the peace of mind. As you can see here, the Yumizen brand is present in hematology clinical chemistry and coagulation. So we have the product range for all these three segments. While there are some other brand, those are very popular brand, Pentra and Micros brand. These are the brand available in the world for a long time. The new product range, which we have recently launched is Hello which is Horiba Evolutive uh, Laboratory Organization, which is capable to handle high workload of hematology. 
Horiba Medical is not only providing the instrumentations, but we are also helping and giving benefits. So there are many benefits to our customers. We have the program called Quality Slide Program, Quality Control Program, Hematovision Atlas, ISO. Of course, we are compatible with uh, external quality control program. There is a program called Side by Side, Umizen Bio, Umizen Chase the Case. And there are many scientific studies when it is done, we share with our customers. One of the benefit, what I, want, I wanted to elaborate here is the quality slide program, where each and every month we release six cases. These are the pathological cases digitally where across the world, uh, doctors are getting benefited with this, uh, with this uh, quality slide program. Our product are compliant and have all the major certifications. Those are required by the laboratories or the countries. Uh, thank you very much. This was a brief introduction from, uh, of the Horiba Medical. Uh, now I would like to ask uh, Dr. Olivier to come here and present uh, the presentation about the external quality control program. Um, thank you, uh, Shubham, for the uh, nice introduction and also for introducing myself. I will share my screen with you. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Then and start the presentation. Okay, I hope everybody can see. <clears throat> so I would like to introduce uh, a little bit the College of American Pathologists, what it does and what you can benefit from our association. <clears throat> well, since Shubham has already introduced myself, um, I will skip this slide. The College of American Pathologists is a professional society that was established over 75 years ago, and it is the official um, society of the American laboratory medics and anatomic pathologists. <clears throat> we are a recognized leader in laboratory quality improvement and advocate for high quality and cost effective patient care. <clears throat> we do serve over 20,000 laboratories in more than 100 countries. Actually, it's, uh, I think it's over 115 countries by now. And what do we do? Um, one pillar of our activities is advocacy. So we create guidelines and try to shape health politics. Uh, education is a very important part of uh, our tasks. Uh, we organize symposia, uh, scientific conferences, workshops, uh, roadshows, and similar stuff. And what is now becoming more and more important, and what we will be talking about today in detail, are the laboratory quality solutions. <clears throat> and apart from those quality solutions, which are essentially our PT EQA programs and the accreditation services. Um, we are a member driven organization. So the member resources form another big part of our uh, tasks. And uh, the CAP also is heavily involved in scientific publications, for example, the archives of pathology. So the CAP has over 18,000 members worldwide. The majority of those are, of course, in the US, but we do have international members. And our PT programs are being shipped to over 8,000 laboratories in 115 countries worldwide. And you can see on this map, everything that is not gray is a country that we serve with our PT programs. <clears throat> the 18,000 members of the CAP form possibly the largest uh, conflagration of expertise in laboratory management all over the world. And this expertise is channeled by the scientific committees 
that develop and improve the proficiency testing and EQA programs, that develop and improve the accreditation services, uh, that monitor new technologies and uh, formulate recommendations. And of course, the members are also the personnel that is uh, inspecting laboratories that have been applied for accreditation. So if you are uh, getting accredited with the CAP, you will be reviewed by your peers because every reviewer or every inspector of the CAP is an expert uh, in its own right. So the key programs for the laboratory improvement <clears throat> are, as I said, labor laboratory accreditation services and the proficiency testing slash external quality assessment. We will talk about the latter, which is an objective and externally evaluated assessment of test performance. So serving the task of improving laboratory result quality by having what used to be called an interlaboratory comparison. The CAP offers over 700 PT programs in all the disciplines that are important for a medical laboratory. Uh, and this ranges from the mundane, such as a glucose testing, to highly esoteric and advanced programs such as uh, next generation sequencing in molecular pathology. All those programs are constantly supervised and annually updated. The new catalog is always coming out in September for the next year. And you can uh, say that about 20 new programs appear every year and a couple of programs um, are being taken off or altered uh, from the program. So what is the major um, characteristics of the uh, PT programs of the CAP? Well, for example, and I think one of the most important uh, characteristics is the very large peer group size. We will be talking about the program that uh, is specifically interesting for you as potential UMISEN uh, users. Uh, and that program uh, often has more than 5,000 participants worldwide. The other characteristic is the option of uh, putting an instrument on what we call the master list. Um, and Horiba has done that recently with, uh, by adding the UMISEN instrument to our master list so that a user for our PT programs can choose this instrument and that means that if at least 10 users choose the same technical basis for obtaining the test results, they will be subdivisioned in a separate peer group. And this in turn will eliminate instrument bias and increase the probability of passing the PT program. The large peer group size is also important in that respect that uh, we ship our PT programs all over the world. Um, so you will be able to compare your own performance with the top laboratories all over the world, in the US, in the Middle East, uh, in China, in South America, or in Europe. So what does the PT programs from the CAP actually offer? Well, first of all, they offer you an insight in the quality status of your laboratory. Every participant for a PT program from the CAP, after sub submitting the results, will receive two documents. One document is called the Participant Summary Report, or PSR, and the other document is called the Evaluation Report. So more specific, the evaluation report is what tells you whether you have passed or failed uh, your participation in the PT program. The participant summary report is an overview over all participants and their respective technical basis for the analysis. I am showing 
an example one page out of a participant summary report, and that's a fairly recent uh, report for the FH16 program from, I think it was like uh, earlier this year, it was the first shipment of this program. And what does this tell you here is um, there is uh, a couple of users that have been using a Kulta instrument, and you will see how many users there are how many participants, what their results are, uh, and what their standard deviation and coefficient of variations are. So in the future, uh, as more and more humans and users are going to be participating, this will be separated into Kulta users and humans and users. And you can compare not only your performance to other humans and users, but also to the users with other technical bases. So from the participant summary report, one can read into shifts and trends and also the latest standards and some comparison data. There are some complementary benefits in some of the programs um, because some of our uh, PT programs have an educational component. There are additional write-ups uh, from our technical experts and some of the programs even include uh, continuing education or CE courses and would qualify for um, further education points for your medical license, for example. Now, the evaluation report is more specific because it actually shows your results as a participant. And um, I'm showing uh, an example here of a very, very recent uh, original evaluation report from one of our customers. Uh, and uh, this was from the second shipment of the FH16 program. So that's, this has come out only a few days ago. So what you see here is uh, a couple of the parameters that have been measured, the specimens that have been used by individual customers. So the second shipment is the specimens number 06 until number 10. The individual results of your laboratory and the limits of acceptability, upper limit, lower limit, and your grade, whether it is acceptable or not. So this laboratory, fantastic, <clears throat> has passed all the, um, all the samples. And so it would qualify for passing the PT program. However, there is more to this document because the trends and the tendencies can be read out of this as well. Take a look at the graphics on the far right. This shows the results over the last three participations of this particular customer. And you see, for example, here at the white blood cell count, there is a major shift from be having the results at the lower end of the scale in the last participation of 2021 up to slightly above the median for the first two participations of 2022. So it's clear to see that something must have happened here. And the analysis of that can also be done with the help of the cap. So even though this customer is perfectly satisfied with his acceptable performance, he might want to look into what has happened here so that he can anticipate and prevent future problems. I've already mentioned briefly the educational write-ups. <clears throat> These are created by experts. The content is related to the testing event, to the elements of that testing event, and uh, integrates clinical relevance of the testing with patient care. There will be some information on current testing trends, suggestions for troubleshooting, and all that is intended to train and maintain the competency of your laboratory staff. The uh, PT programs also help you keeping up with the changes in laboratory medicine, because those programs are constantly monitored by the, the committees, which are all manned by CAP members. So the programs may be updated or even new programs may be introduced. 
let's talk a little bit about the program that we are uh, using here, the FH16, which is designed for laboratories using automated blood cell analysis systems. There are a total of 16 blood cell related parameters that can be measured and for which we can receive the results. And we often have around 5,000 participants worldwide. So taking a look at the image on the right, that is the first page of our kit instructions for this program. And it will detail for you what the uh, samples, the uh, specimens are that you will be receiving and how to deal with the sample once it arrives. And on further pages, there will be specific instructions, for example, for humans and users. Because putting an instrument on our master list not only means that you can choose to uh, select the instrument when reporting your results, but this also means that Horiba, as the manufacturer, has validated the use of our samples with the Umison instrument in a fairly extensive matter and procedure. And Horiba has created a, a little document about the specific instructions that Umison users are supposed to follow when they use the PT program with this instrument in order to obtain the best possible result. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, in the best of worlds, this would be sufficient that every user is always passing the PT program, but this may not always be the case. So what happens in case of a program failure? So you're not passing the program. Well, there are a couple of uh, supporting documents and technologies that will help you analyze what has happened and to prevent it from happening again. So in the participant summary report itself, there is already a section on potential troubleshooting. Also, we do have a um, PT manual that also contains a chapter on troubleshooting. And to be very specific, there is this exception investigation worksheet, which is essentially a root cause analysis questionnaire. So this is just the first page of this document here on the right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where you will be required to enter your administrative data. But then the further uh, pages of this document are nothing but a questionnaire that guide you through the procedure. And by answering the questions on this questionnaire will help you um, elucidate whether the issue, the underlying issue for the failure was a uh, systemic failure or an individual error or whatever else. And this document then can also be stored and be used for um, later analysis and possibly for demonstration for, for accreditation purposes or for reviews of your quality management system. Another very, very important part of participating in the CAPS PT programs is the ability to monitor and to benchmark the performance of your laboratory all through all your participations, all your PT participations by uh, using a web-based tool called the Performance Analytics Dashboard. This is a web-based tool which is accessible through our website, which in a easily understandable graphic display shows you the tendencies and latest developments uh, of all your participations. So you can do a longitudinal analysis, you can do instrument comparisons, you can do site comparisons, for example. Um, you can uh, uh, select 
data, you can filter data, uh, and that all helps to monitor your performance and monitor your quality system. So in summary, the value of the CAP PTs for the individual user is that we offer a full spectrum of programs for all disciplines of the laboratory. All those programs are constantly updated um, by our experts. We offer very usable outputs and monitoring tools to manage and improve the lab's performance. The user has access to a wide variety of educational programs, and we do our best to support you in any root cause analysis in the case of a failure. So who would be there to support you? Um, well, myself, this is my email address here at oshne at cap.org. I am the contact person for all European customers. For all those uh, customers that are outside Europe, um, there is the email address of the international team at cap.org. If you write to that address, you will be, <coughs> you will be transferred to the respective region leader for your region. And also there is a central email address, the contact center at cap.org, which are the colleagues based at the headquarters in Chicago. Uh, they will also be um, available and, and at hand to help you with all your questions. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready to answer your questions now. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation. Uh, this is a time for question answer. Please, please feel free to uh, write your question. So I have received the first question uh, for the hematology PT program. How many times is it performed in a year? Okay. Um, the PT programs, uh, the, the, the shipments per year uh, depends on the PT program. The FH16 program is actually shipped three times per year. So every year in late January, early May and mid September is uh, what the shipment dates are. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have uh, I have another question uh, from other sources. Uh, what what do I what do I do when I have failed a PT? Um, yes, uh, very good question. <clears throat> the first thing is uh, to look into the uh, participant summary report and compare your results to the majority of the results of other participants. Um, there you will be able to see how far out of the results range you are and whether there is possibly an, an instrument bias that could be explaining um, why you did not pass this time. And if that doesn't give you the sufficient information to, to make an informed decision, uh, then you would look into the troubleshooting guide and uh, work with the uh, exception worksheet that I've just shown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the next question is, how long between receiving the samples and having to enter results? Uh, that's a very good question. Oh, that also depends in detail on the program that uh, is being chosen. Uh, and it's, uh, in some cases, it's um, dependent on the stability of the sample. Generally, we allow round about three weeks between the shipment day and the um, day when the results should be coming back. If for some case, there is, a delay in the shipment, or you are not able to, to work on the sample right away. You always have the opportunity to request an extension of the due date. 
-hmm. And that's all that's most easily been done by just sending an email to the contact center. uh that's that's nice thank you very much uh the another another question is uh coming is can i order individual individual shipments of a pt program yeah i've heard that question a lot um generally no if you order a, an annual program let's say in December 2022, you want to order the program for 2023. In that case, you are required to order the whole annual program, like in the case of FH16, all three shipments. Now, that being said, um, if a new customer comes in late, like a customer that is now purchasing a Umizen instrument and wants to participate in the September shipment of um, FH16, in that case, of course, <coughs> we will just send the September, the, the C shipment, and we'll also just charge for the C shipment. So the, the pricing is then reduced to one third of the annual price. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you for this clarification. Uh, there is a one uh, question which is coming to me is that what are the future trend for EQC for the external quality control program? Um, very good question. I wish I had a crystal ball to, to be <laughs> able to answer that. Um, I think for the hematology programs, <clears throat> the future trend will be to make sure that the stability of the sample is maintained and possibly even extended. Um, since it's going to be a whole blood sample, that's always going to be a problem. Um, whole blood is not uh, stable forever and ever. So um, I think our experts are working on that problem um, to have a, a, lot, a longer stability and a reliable sample for every user all over the world. Um, in other programs or in other fields, there will be other trends. Uh, but um, as, as I said, I would have to have a crystal ball to actually find that. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, and now I will take a few more questions from here. Uh, there is a question from uh, Sheena. What is the significant difference between FH10, FH10P and FH16 program? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, if you take a closer look at our uh, catalog, um, which is available on our website, or if you want, I can I can uh, mail uh, an electronic copy, a PDF. Um, the um, hematology programs are have been designed for different purposes. So some programs are specific for very for particular instruments and other programs are specific for particular analytes. So um, there is a table in the catalog uh, which details very nicely which program is used for which uh, analyte or for which instrument. And that's the major difference between those programs. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So another question coming from Ella is, what is a, what is the advantage of the cap pt program compared to with bioret um hmm. that's a very good question because i don't know the bioret programs very well um all i know is that um there could be differences in pricing there could be differences in the peer group size there could be differences in the um extension extent of the master list so um i would not be able to answer any quality related uh, questions on the biorad program because i don't know that program very well mm -hmm. thank you for this uh the question which is coming out is what are the top two major challenges in hematology eqc and how laboratories should handle these challenges? Uh, 
Uh, that question I might need to relate to our scientific committee, to the hematology committee, because they're the scientists that actually work in the field um, using the EQCs every day. Um, I would like to get back to you on that uh, once I've talked to the experts and maybe I can uh, send a round email or I'll let uh, Shupam know um, what the answer is and then he can distribute it to everyone in the yeah board. sure sure uh thank you for this uh, uh for this comment we, we will write back to the concerned person who has asked this question uh the another question is coming out is uh where do i enter results yes I very good um there have been changes lately uh, because uh, up to uh, last year the cap has sent uh, a results sheet, a paper with the samples to every laboratory and the laboratory could fill in that sheet and then scan it and, and email it or fax it to the cap. <laughs> this um, ended in 2021 and as of 2022, the cap is only accepting electronic transmission of the results. And this can be done on our website. Um, at cap.org, there is a, a, a page which is called the ELSS or uh, Electronic Laboratory Solution Suite. Mm -hmm. And that is our uh, web-based tool for transmitting all the results and for obtaining the evaluation reports, for obtaining the participant summary reports, and also for analyzing the participation data in the performance analytics dashboard. So all of that can be done on our website once you've signed up. And if you don't know how to do it, we can help you. There's a, there's a guide document. Um, all you need to do is create an account uh, and then you're in. Okay, uh, perfect. Uh, now I think we are approaching towards the end of the session. Uh, if anybody has a question, please feel free to write. Uh, and uh, we will be discussing this question. Apart from this, please feel free to write us if you have future question or uh, queries related to the EQC and the CAP. Uh, the, the one question probably uh, is that, uh, <laughs> what, what is the pricing and ordering process of FH16? Yeah, I'll be happy to answer that question. Okay, so the pricing of the annual program of FH16 is $339. And that's for all three shipments. So in case you want to join for 2022 and there's only one shipment left, the price for that single shipment would be $113. Additionally, there is a shipping and handling charge of $160 per year and program. Um, so that shipping and handling charge, at least this year, uh, is not divided by the, the shipments itself, um, but by next year, we're currently thinking of actually making this proratable. So uh, you would only pay part of the shipment uh, uh, fee um, if you order later in the year. So the ordering process, um, that's very simple. <clears throat> you can either write me an email or you write uh, an email to the contact center or the international team, um, or you download the ordering form uh, or from the website, from the, from the PT uh, website of the cap.org. Uh, fill that in with administrative information and the um, programs that you want to order, and then send that to me or contact center or the international team and we'll take it from there. Uh, in some cases, um, you may need uh, a, a, an offer, an, a, a performer. Um, you can request that also by ticking a box on the order form. And then um, you will automatically be issued a performer with the um, up-to-date pricing and uh, shipping fees uh, and you can take it from there. 
Great. Uh, it, it looks to me that uh, we have a lot of questions. So I will take uh, two more questions. Uh, for the hematology PT program, after submitting our result, how much time it takes to receive the evaluation? Um, usually that's also between two and four weeks. It depends on whether some of the users have requested an extension. That extension is usually for a week to maximum 10 days. Um, so that might delay the analysis and the evaluation a little bit. But generally, it's uh, available about two, three, at the very latest four weeks after submitting the results. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, the Another question uh, is, uh, what are the chances of the PT sample being damaged or deteriorated? Uh, mm -hmm. And if it is the scenario, what would be the next step of action from the end user perspective? Yes, um, excellent question. Um, it does happen, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, we're shipping worldwide, so we cannot always exclude that shipping delays or customs delays may cause a problem in the uh, quality of the sample. So, for example, the FH16 <clears throat> program is shipped on cool packs. And if you receive the samples and you notice that the samples have warmed up, what you should do is immediately contact the CAP, um, the contact center, for example, and tell them that the sample has not arrived in a proper condition. And what happens then is that most likely you will be sent another set of samples. Um, unless it is a program which has a very, very short shelf life. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and uh, by the time you reported back your problem, uh, the shelf life has already expired. But those are very, very few uh, programs. And generally, we make sure that you will receive a proper set of samples uh, in exchange for the one that has not arrived in a proper fashion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I will take one more question and probably it is a, it would be the last and uh, please, if some questions are left, uh, we will be answering you uh, separately, uh, but, but it, it, it will not stop you to write your question anytime you can, you can write the question. Uh, the next question is that how long is the sample stable to be used for reporting back to CAP? Um, yes. Well, let's talk about the FH16 program because that's the one we're all interested in. Um, the FH16 program samples have a stability of 28 days unopened and eight days opened. So there should be plenty of time to receive the sample, get uh, the, the testing done and report back the results within the stability of the sample. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your uh, question. And uh, thank you, everyone, for participating in this event. Uh, I'm here to sh I I'm sharing one link, which is a feedback link. Please feel free to give your uh, comments on, on this feedback form. Uh, and thank you so much. We will be coming up with more such type of activities, information related to the external quality control program. Uh, please feel free to connect with us and stay tuned. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Oliver. Uh, for this wonderful presentation and taking the question directly from the audience. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, everyone.